Okay, so uh, we've been in this series of messages this summer, right, on the Psalms, and you all have written yours and sent them to me. You all have written yours and gotten them into me. I'm waiting. Um, I'm going to read one. This is uh, has a title, Psalm uh, uh, 12147. This is one of yours. Without you, I'm a lamb to the slaughter. Even so, the slaughter is always near. Okay. Without you, I'm a lamb to the slaughter. Even so, the slaughter is always near. Close enough to nick my flesh. When I bled, you healed my sores. You wiped my tears and pulled me out of certain death. You are watching, but not from a distance. Bet got it wrong. You're always watching, closer than we ever know. Why you allow us to come so near the blade, I won't know on earth, only you know. I'll wait to understand when you tell me yourself. My first second in heaven, as I pass through your gates, my tear ducts will dissolve. I've cried my last tear and left it on earth. Those would sure make some neat songs. They would make some neat songs, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, when you guys write your psalm, it's meaningful, isn't it? And when you hear one of your fellow worshipers' psalm, that touches you too, doesn't it? It's very, very uh, profound. Um, when we set this series up, I was assigned today to do the most uh, well-known psalm, probably in the entire uh, world, uh, the Shepherd Psalm 23. So, you know it, uh, I'll read it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside quiet waters, and he restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for you're with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So Lord, teach us. Teach us from this. This shepherd's psalm, teach us about you and teach us about us and teach us about this life. Uh, we give this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it was a few years ago, I was sitting in the Spokane airport, which, you know, in itself is, it's, you know, the question why. <laughs> why? Why would anyone sit in the Spokane airport? I was waiting for a Southwest flight. And um, there was a guy next to me who looked pretty Spokane rugged, you know, uh, and, uh, and his, his face and his body looked like 10 miles of bad road, you know, was just, and he's sitting there next to me and I'm trying to pretend like I'm reading so as not to get into a conversation, <laughs> you know, you know how you do, you know, and, uh, and, and he leaned over and tapped my arm and said, uh, Hello, and introduced himself, and then he asked me what I did. Now, if I tell people I'm an author, then conversations ensue, and they want to, oh, let's talk about that, you know, because people haven't met authors. So I told them, I'm a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> that way, this conversation's over. <laughs> Nobody ever talks to me after that. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I said, I'm a pastor. And he just went, you know, I do the same work you do. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh man, this is what I got to look forward to, you know. Uh, I said, you're a pastor too? No, I own a ranch with sheep outside of town. I do the same thing you do. And then he said this, which I thought was smug and arrogant, but, you know, it was Spokane. So uh, he said... Uh, you know, Pastor, if you were to come and work on my ranch for one summer, you would learn everything you need to know 
about pastoring a church. That's all you need. One summer. Well, it was not long after that my plane came and I got in and I flew off and okay, good. I never did spend that summer there. Uh, and uh, I never saw him again, but he did plant a seed in me that maybe I need to learn more about sheep if I'm gonna work with y'all. <laughs> you know, and so, you know, and, and he'd ask me, so would you know anything about sheep? And I said, no, no, I just know the, you know, the, the big, uh, the big three S's, you know, they're stupid, they're stubborn, and they're smelly, you know, I got, I got that, you know, he, he went, oh, no, no, there's so much more, there's so much more you could really uh, benefit from working with me. Um, so anyway, so I have actually over the years since then um, done a, a pretty good amount of research on sheep, and uh, and the internet is filled with interesting things, you know. It has like sheep dogs herding sheep in formations with lights on them at night. It's a really cool thing. They do the weird designs and art and things. And, but um, let me share some of the things I learned. And it's the big question is, what makes it difficult for sheep to lie down? Why is it that this psalm starts out, the Lord's my shepherd, I shall my want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Why is that so difficult that it has to be the first thing that the shepherd does? Well, I happen to know, because I've done some research. I didn't work on the guy's ranch, thankfully, but uh, and my face still looks like 10 miles of bad road. But um, the first one is, uh, I was surprised by this, but it's wariness. I didn't realize that sheep have wariness, uh, that, um, they're all kind of the same size, so you don't have perspective. You don't, you know, it's not like, uh, you know, I'm in, a, I'm in a Miata and a big old SUV with somebody talking on the phone uh, as goes by me, and they have perspective of what's coming up, and I, I'm lost down there in the ground. Well, with the sheep, they're all basically the same size, so they're more vulnerable. Isn't that weird? They're vulnerable, and they don't have a big defense mechanism. They don't have, you know, porcupine quills, uh, stuff like that. They, they don't have armadillo shell bodies. They're just pretty vulnerable. And because of that, uh, there's a restlessness, and uh, they have to stay vigilant. And so they're not going to lie down where, they're, where they can become prey uh, very easily. But it's the presence of the sh shepherd that communicates that there's someone here with perspective different than mine and uh, there's a, there's someone here who is on the lookout for me so therefore they can make me lie down and I don't have to be on guard every minute and wired up for my own protection because I feel so vulnerable the second one is and I was surprised to learn this that in flocks there are pecking orders now this really reminded me of the church you know but um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why, but there are actual pecking orders and that there are, even though they're all about the same size and everything, that there are bully sheep in the flocks. <laughs> and they come in and, uh, you know, if, if one sheep has found a particular clump of grass that's pretty good and is eating on it, the uh, bully sheep, they, and they said they actually walk with kind of a stiff-legged walk so the other sheep know who they are. And they come over and they'll butt them in, with their heads until they move and then they'll take over the good spot. I don't know why I thought of the church. I, you know, I'm sorry, but uh, not this one. You know, but you know, others. And uh, but this idea that they're being bullied around, and there's a pecking order. And uh, you know, our family. I told you we used to have chickens, uh, and uh, my brother Richard had them, and the, they had a pecking order. That's where they get a phrase like that. You know, and the the, the rooster pecks the hen, the hen pecks the chicks, and then the then they all peck Johnny. You know, it's kind of. Uh, weird thing, but um, the sheep have that. And what happens is, uh, when the shepherd is present, it changes the dynamics of the flock. Isn't that weird? The shepherd uh, t reestablishes the power lines because now there's one who uh, is, is bigger than the bullies, basically. And so they don't have to worry about being head butted out of the way and uh, and lose their place because um, the shepherd can challenge the bullies and um, and bring them around. The third one is that they're um, often tormented by pests and they're bugged. 
You ever feel bugged? Just bugged. Um, some people bug us. Some situations bug us. Some, you know, it's like, and, and when you're feeling bugged, okay, picture this one. You're not able to relax, are you? There's a frustration and a, and, and a bugginess. I'm going back to that word. <laughs> and and, and the, the shepherd has all kinds of ointments and treatments. You know, you're the sheep dip, what they put them down in to kill all the uh, things that would infect them. And, and it gives them a, uh, an ability to relax and have peace because they're not being tormented by pests. And the last one, obvious one, it's, it's hard to lie down um, when you're hungry. And so something simple as hunger keeps sheep moving. You go from one clump of grass to the next, 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 because you, you don't know. And the thing about the sheep, I learned this, you know, it's more than you need to know. Uh, they will actually gnaw on a clump of grass so tenaciously and so fervently that they'll chew up and destroy the root system. So therefore, when they go on, they leave an arid waste area. And, uh, the, and so for the, the shepherd to direct their movement and keep them going before they destroy the land, and, the, and, and notice it says, you, you make me lie down on an arid plain where we've already devoured it. No, in the green pastures where there's plenty. So this, this whole thing of God's provision for us, it, it hangs out here. And, and I, I love God's provision. And then later on in the psalm, if you notice, you know, it talks about his protection. You know, I fear no evil, for you're with me. And these things, your rod, your staff, they comfort me. Um, we, we, we grab hold of God's protection. And I realize that it's so easy for us, pretty much, to pray and seek uh, God's providing for us and his protection, right? That's probably most of what our uh, turning to the Lord's all about. Take care of this. Keep me from that. Help me get this, you know. And, and so much of our uh, communication with God and our expectations from God have to do with provision and protection, right? There's another one, another part of this, though, that's in the psalm that we don't like. Um, at least I don't like it, maybe you do. And that is the shepherd's leadership. Um, I want him to provide for me and I want him to protect me. I don't know that I want him to lead me. Hmm. Particularly, I don't know if I want him to lead me where he wants me to go. You know, just to be honest. Uh, I would like to let God know where I'm planning to be and what I'm planning to do, and then maybe he'll bless me on the way. Wouldn't that be great? You know, here's my plan, Lord, and why don't you provide for me and protect me as I do my plan? Well, you know what? I'm praying two-thirds of the 23rd Psalm when I do that. You know, it's not bad. Two out of three isn't bad. But we don't get it, and we don't understand the essence of what God's trying to show us here until we come to grips with his leadership. He guides us. He leads us. He actually takes us in uh, paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Not, uh, John, what do you want to do today? Let me see if I can help you get there. You know, in the most comfortable way. <laughs> and, and so then if, if I have a rugged time, then it's, well, Lord, you didn't help me get there in a comfortable way. <laughs> you know, he's going, why are you so pouty? You went your own way, Westfall. He always calls me Westfall, you know, it's a last name relationship. And, uh, <laughs> but, but isn't that how we get sometimes? And he's going, no, this shepherd will lead us where he wants to take us. Right? Not where we want to go. Now, 
this comes down to a struggle with our will. Our will. The, what we commit to before we make decisions. You know, we may think, oh, well, we'll just, I'll see what happens and then I'll make a decision. You know, I'll, I'll see what goes on and then I'll decide, you know, keep my options open. Uh, that's my natural instinct. But, but this is going different. This is, you know, let's deal with, the, with our will and um, our ability to let God lead us before we ever get to the decision-making point. Where is he going to take us? And um, it's, this is where uh, being a follower of Jesus stops being a theory or a religious spiritual attitude or something like that and it becomes something very specific. He leads us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And, uh, and the essence of this, the essence of his leadership is actually um, more simple than uh, you might think. You know, over the years, I've, I've, I've had a lot of people come to me uh, looking for guidance. Um, you, you might say, why? <laughs> why you? <laughs> you know, obviously, you don't know anything. And, uh, but, but, or, or they'll write me now. I'm getting you know, emails from around the country since uh, getting past what you never get over came out. And, and people are writing, and they want guidance about certain things. And they'll raise up issues and say, what should I do here? What should I do? And I go, how do I know? You know? And they don't like that. But, and, and they don't like it when I say, you know, if you want guidance, why don't you just read the horoscopes? <laughs> right? Or, or go to one of those, uh, you know, tea leaf re readers, or the, the gypsy thing with the palm, you know, and the sign out in front of the place, you know, next to the gas station on uh, 145th. Um, <laughs> I've seen your cars there, you know, and, uh, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> but if, if guidance is what you want, then go get it. But what is it that God wants for you? What is it does the shepherd want for you? That you have this guidance? No. The shepherd wants one thing for you. Will you be in a trusting relationship with the shepherd? <coughs> will you trust the shepherd? Will, that, will you allow yourself to have a personal relationship with the shepherd? That's really what God's will is, right? That's all, everything you need to know. You, if, if you wanna wonder, well, I wonder what God's will is for me at this time. It's that you would have a trusting relationship with the shepherd. And that you would open your life to allow the shepherd's intentions to become your intentions and the shepherd's plan to be your plan and, and surrender the control of your life. Right? That gets right down to it. Are we going to surrender the control of our life? Now, for a guy like me who's a, you know, controlled junkie on the wagon, kind of on the wagon, <laughs> I leave my disagree with that, <laughs> but I'm off the wagon. <laughs> yeah, you know, I knew that was coming. You know, uh, I opened the door there. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, you know, I'm a control freak, and it is so hard for me to say, okay, thy will be done, not mine, you know. I will let you lead me where you would have me go, not where I necessarily want to go. Have you tag along in the back seat. Now, if God's will is that we have a right relationship with him, and a trusting relationship with the shepherd, what happens when we, when we blow it? When we grab control and say, no, my way or the highway, you know. Uh, what happens when we do that? Uh, Jesus actually talks about that. 
when the when the when the 99 church people are all doing God's will and they all have a relationship with him and one of them says no way I'm doing my thing what does the shepherd do he leaves everybody and goes after the one who went I'm going my way so even when you go your way who is with you yeah the Lord says even if you you know give me the finger and walk away I'm still going to be there with you, you know? And that is the most profound thing, that, that if you realize it doesn't matter where you go and what you do, the Lord's going to stay near you, and His provision and His protection and all those things are there. The only question is, will we allow His leadership? Will we allow that? That's our choice. You're welcome to say no. I'll take the provision and I'll take the protection. That's good enough for me. But you could say yes. You could say, all right, have it your way. Have it your way, Lord. And that opens the door for a whole new life. Um, you know, right now, I don't particularly like where my life is. I don't like what we're going through in our family. I don't like the way things don't resolve the way I wish they would. I don't like waking up and seeing that some problems haven't been resolved. You know, I would have fixed them in the night if anybody gave me a, a wrench, you know. <laughs> I don't like that. So every single day, every day, not because I'm a pastor, not because I'm a religious guy, not because I'm not, and not because, you know, I got it all figured out. Every day, because that I don't know another way to be healthy. I have to say, okay, Lord, you lead today. And this and that, with them, with them, and help me not to run off. Amen. So, let's pray. Lord, we do thank you for your care. We thank you that you track us down when we do run off. And we thank you that you open the door for us to lie down and relax and rest in you. And that you provide for us and you protect us when it's needed. And it is needed. But Lord, today we pray that you would have your way in us and that we would not turn away from you. So Lord, come into our lives, into our hearts and minds, come into our relationships, come into our work and our play, come into every area of our life and be the shepherd. Give us the courage to see you, to hear you, and to follow you. That's our greatest need today. In Jesus' name, amen.